Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing a standalone deployment of Checkpoint Firewall. So if you guys are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and share. And if you are returning, you know the deal. So let's jump onto the desktop and let's get to business. All right, so the last video we installed the checkpoint where we haven't configured it yet. So if you remember, we have it right here. We can log in. There's multiple ways to configure it. So we can do, for an example, let's make this, I'm not sure if I can make it bigger. I'll see if we can try to zoom that in. But we can try, I mean, we can do show interfaces interface ETH zero. Whoops, I put interfaces, interface ETH. So here we have our IP address right there, 192.168.100.1 slash 24. I was looking for it for a second. So this is what we have to get to in order to configure our standalone machine or a standalone firewall. So what I have here is a Windows 10 machine. So if you remember, we have to right click here on our firewall. And when we go to network, we have to set this to NAT checkpoint. In my case, you can name it whatever you want. Just make sure it's on the same exact network that you made the IP address for your firewall. Okay, so I want to go ahead and hit OK there. And on my Windows 10 machine now, this is my Windows 10. I have it on the same network. So let's go triple check settings, my network. I have it on checkpoint network, but we do have a problem, right? Like if we do IP config, we have this 169.254 address. Remember in the beginning, we didn't enable DHCP. So we have to create a static IP for our our machine here. Let's do change adapter, double click, go to details. We can see that our IPv4 address is a PIPA, right? So let's go to properties here and IPv4. And we can make our IP address dot, I don't know, I can make it dot five. And my gateway is going to be the firewall. Okay. So before we even do that, let's try to ping it. Let's try to ping 192.168.100.1. It's gonna say transmission failed, okay? Cool. All right, so let's go ahead and make our changes. And now let's see if we can ping it. Now, voila, we're able to ping it. So now what we can do is minimize all this and get to the meat and potatoes. So let's open up a you know, your web browser, we can go HTTPS slash slash and then my IP address. What did I do? Did I ex exit out by mistake? Let's try that again. There we go. All right, so it says, because there's no certificate, so we can go ahead and continue, not recommended, but it's in our lab. And now we're able to hit the firewall. Now we can log in with the credentials that we set up. Okay. And this is gonna prompt you to do the initial configuration. So this is the first time, the configuration wizard, and we are on the platform open server. We can go ahead and click next. We're gonna go ahead and continue. Let's see if I can make this a little bigger. I'm sure I can make this bigger. We're going to continue with R81.1 configuration. And this is all correct in my case. Okay. We don't need IPv6. We're going to just going to be using IPv4. Okay. And my host name is going to be FW1. Okay. So which is firewall one. Or I can put CP dash checkpoint firewall one. Okay. I don't have any domain name, but in a real environment, you may have a domain controller that's supplying DNS and all that stuff, but this is just a small network. We don't have all that good stuff. 
Okay, so it is around 9.30 p.m. EST, so that's perfectly fine for me. Let's go ahead and click on next. So this is what I was saying. This, we're gonna be doing the security gateway and or security management. So we're doing a standalone addition. Okay, so likewise for here, if we just wanted to do security gateway or vice versa, but we're gonna do both because we are using a standalone config. If we had a, a cluster, you would cluster it, but this is not a part of a cluster. This is just a standalone, so we're good to go. So now you want to you can define a new administrator. So I'm going to put InfoSecPat. Okay. So just to have another administrator on the account. And in the real environment, you you don't want to have any IP address ad accessing your firewall. Uh, you would say, okay, this address, which is in my case dot five or the network that you wanna be associated with that. In this case, or you can do an IP range. Okay, I only want you know, the, secure, the network security team to access this, which they're at 192.168.100.100 to, you know, whatever, the, the next 50 addresses because there's 50 of them. And, but you get the point, right? So, but I wanna put any IP address, that's fine for me. And these are the these are the products that are going to be installed, which is cool. I don't want to go ahead and send any data. So let's go ahead and hit start. Go ahead and continue. Yes. And it's going to go on its merry way to configure. Uh, it's going to verify the configuration, make sure all that stuff is golden. It's good to go. And after that, it's going to go ahead and configure the security gateway. And after the security gateway, it's going to configure the security management and then do all the compatibility packages and then you know, finalize that configuration. And this can take several moments. So let's hang tight and give this a moment. All right, so that completed. So now you must restart in order for the configuration to take effect. So let's go ahead and hit OK. OK, so once the machine reboots, we should be able to log in and see what's popping. We'll give this a moment. It will take a few moments because remember, these are virtual machines. So if we come over here, this should probably start rebooting shortly. Let's give this a moment. And once this reboots, we should be okay. So looks like we're back in. Let's see if we can hit the server now. Let's go ahead and log in. Okay. So now you can see it's CP firewall. Now if I do show interface ETH zero, it's still, okay, so we're good there. Let's see now. We can, can we ping it? We can ping it, okay. Let's see. Try to open this up again. Let's try to get back to that. Why can't I get to it? Oh, not that, I just want to refresh the page. That's strange. All right, unless it takes a few minutes then we should be able to get to it by now. If the IP is there, 192.168.100.1, let's do show, um, config, whoops. Configuration. All right, so I just wanna see all the config. We'll go through all of this more later. I just wanna see if there's anything in here that's, okay, the state is on. I'll negotiate, okay. So it looks like it's pretty, let's see. I don't know why I can't get to it though. I'm able to ping the IP. Let me make sure this might be. 
Now let me ping. Yeah, I'm able to still see it. So why can I get to it? Very strange. I guess now we have to do some troubleshooting. Show route. So my route is directly connected. Oh man, what's uh but show uh do, 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 do. there we go. I want to do show management. So ETH zero. So that is my management interface. I just want to make sure there we go. Man, that took a minute. That really took a while. So if you get scared like I did, you just have to be patient, folks. All right, so let's go ahead and log back in now. And then once you're back in, so that took probably about four or five minutes. Um, so you can see, now we're inside the firewall. You can go through network management, you can go to system management, you can go to advanced routing, you can check out user management, which we have probably the two users, HA, which is high availability. And we'll get into a lot of these uh, configurations as we go, maintenance, and then, you know, upgrades. And, you know, you can look and see if you can download. We can download this. So what's the smart console? Um, I'm glad you asked. So when you manage the firewalls, you can use a smart console to manage the blades of the of the firewalls. So I want to go ahead and download that and it's pulling it directly from the server. So we're not connecting to the internet or anything like that. So once this is downloaded and we will run this right now so you can walk uh walk through just with me right now. Run anyway because that's fine in my case. And once we install this, we'll have to put the server name and then we'll have to put, you know, the username and password. So let's give this a moment. And if it's slow like mine, hang tight. We'll get there sooner or later. And I really appreciate you guys hanging tight and uh, doing some troubleshooting, right? Which it was all about patience. So some of these commands you're going to learn more as we go, like show management interface, show routing and all that stuff. So I agree. Install. And we'll go ahead and install this. I didn't want to install this now, but I guess since we're here, we'll install the smart console as well. It shouldn't take very long, maybe a couple minutes. So we'll give this a moment. And hopefully you guys are enjoying, you know, enjoying these firewall videos, how to set up firewalls, how to set up checkpoint. And you can do this. It's so crazy today. You can do this all in your environment, on your computer and set up a whole separate network to test and learn. It's amazing. You know, like when I started networking, it was probably now 16 years ago. Like literally like when I was doing my Cisco, excuse me, my Cisco training, even uh, SonicWall and WatchGuard, like I would have the WatchGuard firewalls. I would have the SonicWall firewall, the TZs, and all these things physically you know, in my presence, configuring them, going through them. Now it's just like everything we can do virtually. It's, it's, it's amazing. You know, it's so cool that we can just do this, download an ISO and set up a firewall in a matter of, you know, minutes, literally. Um, it only took us a few minutes to install the firewall. Configuring it is a different story, but installing it, you know, it took what, a couple of minutes, 10 minutes. So it's really cool. It's really cool that we can have the opportunity to do all these fun things in, an, in, an, uh, in a virtual environment. I'm getting tired. It's almost 10 o'clock my time. And it's like I'm doing back-to-back -back videos. So I don't know if that was a good idea. But when I'm on a roll, I just like to keep going and going and going. But um, this will be my last video for tonight. So once we get this smart console installed, once it's done we can finish and wrapping up the video this thing is taking forever come on 95 percent 
Go to 100. Come on, you can do it. There we go. So it's almost there. And if you guys are um, checkpoint experts or checkpoint firewall admins today, and if there's anything that you want to see, let me know. Um, I'll do some research if I haven't done it already. And then, you know, I have a whole list of little videos I want to do. So like from configuring it to doing uh, geolocations and setting up VPNs and setting up, you know, different, I have a whole list of what I want to do. And if you, you know, incorporate any kind of uh, suggestions, let me know and we'll be sure to uh, incorporate that. Obviously, if it flows, you know, but um, like, again, I really appreciate everyone watching my videos, all the support from over the years. And uh, thank you. All right. So let's go ahead and hit finish here. And let's go ahead and wait a few more minutes now starting. Let's see. Come on. Let's see how long starting takes. I'm getting impatient. There we go. Username. So my username is admin. My password is fancy password. My server is that. Okay. And we'll connect to it now. And you can manage it through the smart console or you can do it through the HTTP, you know, HTTPS, whack, whack, through the web GUI. So I just want to show you guys that we can connect to it through here. And once I'm able to connect to it through here, then we'll wrap up the video. All right, so let's go ahead and proceed. Authentication fail to the server. Admin, that's my 192, let's see, did I fat finger it? Maybe I fat fingered it, I don't know. But I'm sure that's my. All right, let's do infosec pat. Let's see if that guy. See if he can connect. And if not, you know, I'll uh, now it's connecting to the server. So maybe we can't connect directly through the admin. But that's fine. We have infosec pat to uh, connect to. That's why it's important to create that initial user so you can uh, manage your firewall. And you never really want to log in as admin in case that, you know, that account gets compromised or anything like that, then you can, you know, tinker around with the firewall or any kind of network device or any kind of security appliance. And you never want that, especially when you're uh, managing and maintaining a firewall environment or a security environment. You want to leave those adversaries, those hackers out of your network as best as possible. So you want to make it complicated and hard for them to uh, compromise your system. And if you have admin, it's just a matter of time trying to spray that account or anything like that, unless you have some kind of complex passphrase, all that good stuff. But let's see, this is going to initialize the services. So let's see how long this takes. All right, now it's loading some data. Launching application. 10 years later. Let's see. Come on. You can do it. It's like mesmerizing looking at those dots. All right. Here we go. Voila. We can X out of here. We don't need this right now. But yeah, so this is the firewall. We can see the tasks. And we can manage everything here. We can see the, the ports and uh, all that good stuff. So... We're going to stop here. I don't want to go further. Now we have the firewall set up. We have smart console installed and everything should be good to go from here on out. So thank you so much for viewing. Until next time, have an awesome day.